Hey guys, so I wasn't originally going to do a video today, but uh, I have stumbled across some news which I would really love to share with you. Now, uh, as you guys know, I am no stranger to sharing a discussion or two down in the comment section of one of my videos, and a lot of these discussions usually circulate around distributions and desktop environments, and one of the desktop environments which comes up almost the most, it would seem, in conversation is XFCE. And there are a few reasons why people are interested in XFCE, uh, partly because since the introduction of GNOME 3 and its interesting uh, sort of changes it's made to uh, the uh, user interface, uh, a lot of people have found themselves ditching GNOME 3 for XFCE. Uh, a lot of people consider or like XFCE because it's that nice balance between uh, having a full featured desktop environment but also something that's quite lightweight. And how lightweight you want to consider XFCE is it's really up to what you use your system for. I don't immediately jump to the idea of XFCE being a lightweight desktop environment because if I want lightweight I tend to go LXDE which is significantly lighter but has less features. So it is almost like a trade-off in it, very much in that um, sense of the expression. That being said though, XFCE does, it is aware of uh, the resources that it uses and uh, it, it, is, it is more lightweight than GNOME and, and KDE and that's undeniable. You can argue, of course, that it also looks a little bit dated, isn't updated as regularly. In fact, if you were to go to xfce.org and look on the front page where they have their news items, the last update is from April of 2012. Um, and I, I, I've known this for quite some time. Um, I regularly check out the website to see what's new for the past couple of years, and um, it, it doesn't appear that there is much going on, at least if the front page is anything to go by. And to be honest, considering the number of projects that I enjoy following, everything from KDE to GNOME to even things like Razer QT, um, I don't really have that, uh, that much time or inclination to go further than the front page of a lot of projects just to see if they're still active. But I did uh, recently lurk through a number of forums where XFCE came up uh, in discussion, and a lot of people did seem to think that the project had, if not been somewhat abandoned, uh, that it was shelved by a lot of people, that it was winding down, that it was you know, not keeping up the pace considering that there, you know, haven't been that many major releases as of late and that it does seem to be pretty stagnant. A lot of people aren't really entirely sure why this is. There have been some updates that, that have sort of crawled through, but nothing to really write home about. And a lot of people consider this somewhat unusual because this was a great opportunity for XFCE to make its name as one of the most popular distributions, if not the uh, most popular desktop environment. Um, but it's uh, sort of it's it's inactivity um, seemed to seem to um, let. Uh, other desktop environments like Mate or Mate or however you want to pronounce it eat its lunch, uh, which was the exact which was the exact expression used, um, which is so I don't know that just weirdly amused me. But um, and a lot of people are championing Mate as a uh, somewhat lightweight or at least sort of resource aware desktop environment. But again, we all know that it's what GNOME 2 would be if it carried on its uh, natural course of events. Um, and it is gaining GNOME 3 support, and, and, and Mate is coming along. But the, the thing is with, with Mate and Cinnamon and other similar desktop environments, with the exception of Unity, because Unity's got the backing of Canonical, but with these other um, newer desktop environments that we're seeing come up, which seems to be as a result of GNOME 3's user interface, um, I feel a little bit sceptical towards them. A desktop environment's a big... Well, it's not It's not even so much as a big project. It's a lot of projects, um, and some of which are reasonably sizable. It's a lot of effort to put together a desktop environment. Now, some of these desktop environments are shells rather than desktop environments, but Mate and Cinnamon uh, both are fully-fledged desktop environments. Cinnamon used to be a GNOME shell, but then they decided to fork it completely from, from GNOME 3, um, which I can somewhat understand, considering that I really don't like GNOME 3, as per my review what, a couple of weeks ago. But then again, Cinnamon don't seem to have rectified the problems that GNOME 3 had. So I, a part of me thinks that they're just making more work for themselves. Again, I don't know the project. This is just the perspective of someone that doesn't really know what they're talking about uh, on the outside looking in. But I do like XFCE because, like 
KDE and like GNOME and unlike Cinnamon and unlike Mate, it's got history behind it. And I think that's really important, at least for me, when it comes to looking at what kind of software I want to use. And that includes, of course, desktop environments. Because if a project's been around for a long time, it means that it's it's developed structures and coping mechanisms and all this kind of thing. It's um, it's it. We know that it's it's in it for the long haul because it's been in it for the long haul. A lot of new projects die out within the first couple of years, sometimes even sooner than that. And I like to really know if a project is likely to be around in five or ten years' time before I actually really start using it, especially if it's something big like a desktop environment, because a desktop environment is. It's it it's it's where the operating system meets the user, really, isn't it? Um, and this is why I like KDE. KDE, uh, along with so many other fantastic reasons for for enjoying it, it's got that history, uh, and it builds up a, a large not only user base but a developer base as well. And what I mean by that is um, a thousand part-time developers that work on it in their spare time or just casually is significantly better than say 250 full-time developers that could do the same amount of work but of course they'd be you know each person is doing more work um, and that's kind of how sort of KDE feels in a lot of ways is that it feels like it's the work work done by a lot of people in a very structured system where where no people seem to be overworked and like i say this is this is me on the outside looking in whereas something like cinnamon does seem very much to be a labor of love and mate as well and it does seem that um that it the institutional history behind it not being as long means that that enthusiasm and that passion can run out and what do you have once that enthusiasm and passion runs out do you have a strong stable structure that is uh geared to work in the long term well only time will tell on that one you can kind of argue that mate has history in the way of gnome 2 because also from what i've understood a lot of uh gnome 2 developers decided to jump ship to mate um but that's still a new institution. That's still a new entity, is mate. It's it's not gnome two. It's a it's a new it's a forked desktop environment uh, with some people jumping ship from the original, and that's that's a, a common story among forks as well. And forks don't have the the best and brightest history of succeeding in the long term. There's usually some kind of uh, open source Darwinism going along. But anyway, like I say, back to the topic at hand because I'm just waffling now. XFCE have released an update on their blog, blog.xfce.org. This is where I went to go because I want XFCE hasn't put up an update for a long time, but there are distributions being built around it. There are people raving about it. Just look in the comments section of many of my videos where I talk about desktop environments. People love XFCE. It's aware of the resources it uses. It's reasonably lightweight and feature full. It's customizable. It has brilliant multi-monitor support. Better than GNOME 2, better than Mate, better than Cinnamon, better than GNOME 3. A lot of people do not give that it, it, it credit. It's got no, it's got multi monitor support on a par with KDE, um, and it is. It's, it's basically what made me switch from GNOME back. Like this is a, this is a long time ago, but I switched from GNOME to XFCE for the reason of multi monitor support alone. XFCE, it is. It's very much a dark horse in the desktop environment world, but it is very popular. It's certainly gained a lot in popularity since GNOME 3, but that popularity seems to be somewhat stabilizing, rounding off a little bit, because it doesn't seem to be as active as it, as it used to be. Uh, and I understand that having long release cycles is good for stability, and it's good for longevity, but this is a very long release cycle, very long release cycle, so... <laughs> but like I say, it's not for me to judge the problems or its mechanisms, but... I did check out the blog just to see sort of where, like, what what was the last sort of recorded moment of activity. Um, the last blog post, I've got it right in front of me here on my tablet, February 19th, 2015. Yesterday. Um, or yesterday as of time of recording. They have a release date. I'm just going to look down here because... Um, Yes, a date has been decided. 4.12, which is the next release, will be released by the last week of the end of February 2015. One week from now. That's the, uh, that's the hope. That's the dream. 
that is some coincidental timing that I decided to check the blog. There seems to be quite a lot of updates, actually. For for it going from 4.11 to 4.12, there seem to be a lot of things. There are a lot of things that are under the hood changes, for example, making the code more accessible to new developers. So that might have been the problem. That might have been one of the problems why it did seem to sort of slow down quite a lot is because there was... a uh, a development team that perhaps knew each other quite well and as that team sort of drifted off onto other projects there there wasn't that manpower to fill the gaps left by developers that might, might have moved on to other things or whatever i don't know um but like i say it you know if, if if it is difficult for newer developers to get on board then obviously that's going to affect the longevity of the project um and it's going to affect the stability of the project as well so they they kind of address that here really um they talk about their support for GTK3 and what they're going to do about it. They talk about some of the themes. They talk about bug fixes. They talk about fr the freezes on 20th of February today so that the translators can get to work. Um, a proposition to do regular rele releases for translation updates. That's always good. But of course, as an English speaker, natively, I kind of sort of take that the tech world is just always going to be accessible to me. I, I, I take that for granted all us english speakers do and we shouldn't but it's 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 a sin we carry isn't it um it talks a lot about the core apps it's a very lengthy post um i wish i wish more projects did posts like this actually um talks about pulse audio um talks about the gtk xfc uh, xfce engine um yeah so there's a lot i will of course link to it down in the description below um but I am glad to see that we might very well see a new XFCE release. And of course, I will be reviewing it. Very excited because XFCE, it's one of my favorite distributions, definitely. I prefer it over Mate uh, or Mate. I prefer it over, definitely prefer it over Gnome. The only one it would rival, or the only ones it would rival for me are KDE and LXDE. LXDE, for me at least, it has that corner of being the uber lightweight desktop environment, so XFCE isn't really in direct competition. But I, I guess I consider XFCE to be the GTK counterpart to KDE, because they do seem somewhat similar. Um, Gnome just seems at the moment, nowadays, it just... You, well, see my review. It gives me feelings of despair. I'm sorry. I appreciate that it's it, like a lot of people get on with it. A lot of people seem to find it fast. I don't know. Like, uh, I got a, I got a, I got a fair amount of criticism for saying that KDE was somewhat bloated, and a lot of that criticism was well gnome or gnome, as some of you insisted I pronounced it, um, is even more bloated. And of course, I did my KDE review before I did my. Gnome, uh, gnome, gnome, I'm just going to call it Gnome, okay? Gnome review, uh, I did my Gnome review second. So I didn't have any idea how, how bloated Gnome was. It's And it's like, it reminds me, it reminds me a lot of Android. It reminds me a lot of Android. Except Android's faster. <laughs> okay, anyway, that's enough of my rambling. But I am glad to see that there is a very visible, quite bright light at the end of this tunnel. There are a lot of distributions that use XFC as its default uh, as its default desktop environment. Um, and rightly so. It's fantastic. It's got a proven track record. Um, and it's got great uh, it's got great multi-monitor support. I know most of you don't care about that, but it's it obviously having multi-monitors. And, and being quite specific about where I want my taskbars to be and all that kind of stuff. Um, XFCE definitely um, feels that particular niche for me. Um, and again, it is, it's, it's uh, resource aware, it's, it's reasonably lightweight, but also it's cosmetically quite nice. And of course, again, it's, it's, it's very customizable, um, but it also comes with compositing that's integrated into it a lot better than pretty much any of the desktop environments. I remember when they first brought in compositing into XFCE. And from my memory, they brought it in when I was at university. It was a brand new feature, very shiny. It was when compositing was reasonably new. XFCE brought it in uh, in a pretty integrated way, in, in, in a pretty integrated way. Whereas GNOME brought it in through Compiz, and Compiz sort of it felt like something you lumped on top of your window manager, uh, even though it was a window manager. It, it like it felt like just an extra layer of stuff. Uh, XFCE seemed to to at least give the feeling that the compositing was much more in, in you know intertwined in the desktop environment and i didn't have any bugs from it whatsoever with the you know the translucency effects or the transparency effects and the shadows the drop shadows and things like that it was it was a very like it wasn't major compositing effects it was very light very very 
subtle compositing effects, but they work. They did the job right out of the box. I, I'm going to be perfectly aware that I know people are not going to have the same experiences as me when they did bring that in, but it's just my experience. It was actually particularly weirdly smooth, actually. You kind of expect with um, compositing, or, or whenever you bring in like a new technology, you always expect there to be some degree of, of bugs or whatever. But, uh, but XFCE... By and large, probably one of the more stable ones. Most stable, really. I've never had any serious bugs with XFCE. They seem to be pretty damn good at bug bug testing. And I, I, I think a lot of you guys do seem to be in agreement with that. A lot of you guys, when you've uh, been dis distro hopping, from what I've managed to tell from the comments in the, in the comment section, uh, you've often actually landed on XFCE. Um, more times than you've shifted from it. Um, a lot of you have tried things like LXDE, not finding the features in that or whatever, um, and a lot of you have gone from, from GNOME to XFCE and all this kind of stuff. But a lot of you do seem to have landed on it. In fact, I think the least complained about distribution from the comment section is Mint XFCE edition. If if someone was having problems with Linux, they you know there was something wrong here, something wrong there. I would point them in the direction. If if you can't install Linux Mint XFCE edition, then then Linux is just not going to be supported on your machine, <laughs> because it seems that everyone that, that everyone that puts um, XFCE Mint onto their their machine, it it just it seems to get rid of a lot of problems. That's what I'm saying. Um, maybe Mint should consider replacing it. Uh, you know, making it their their secondary. Um, uh, distribution as opposed to the Mate one, because I think I think Mate is basically trying to get known to be more like XFCE. We've already got XFCE, you know. Anyway, that's just a few thoughts on it. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are on XFCE down in the comment section below. But also let me know: Have you tried Mate and XFCE? Now I haven't really given Mate a good uh, run for its money, and I will do. It's on my to-do list, and I'll I'll sort of make the comparison. I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison at some point. Um, but if any of you guys have already done that, please feel free to share your experiences down in the comment section below. I'd very much like to hear them. Anyway, apologies for the rambling, um, because this was originally supposed to be just a quick update, letting you know that XFCE um, is on its way, or at least the new, new version of it. Um, but what can I say? You know, I love this game. So that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. And because it is the end of the video, there is this obligatory mention that I, of course, have a personal non-tech YouTube channel, which I'm doing non-tech videos on now, and a gaming channel. Uh, links will be on my channel page, so you can go there. I won't put them in the description every single time because it just clutters stuff up down there. Okay. Who wants a cluttered up description box? I don't. I can tell you that. Um, I like my stuff lightweight, just like XFCE. So, that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.